The question for today's video, why do we need to be applying FOSS? According to the Google, plants need phosphorus for normal root development and timely maturity. They use it for photosynthesis, storage and transfer of energy, and respiration, among other various functions. Without enough supply of phosphorus, plants are unable to complete their production cycle as expected. But what if I told you we're applying too much synthetic FOSS? And what if I told you that that's bad for your plant? And even more importantly, you can save thousands of dollars by not even applying it. And that's the problem with phosphorus. And today, we're gonna show you how you can eliminate it. Today's episode is sponsored by Regen Ag Labs. Regen Ag Labs is the lab that we trust. Every year, farmers spend thousands of dollars to apply phosphorus to their farm ground. The sad thing is, is most of that is wasted because 80% and in some cases higher than 80% of FOSS gets tied up in our soils because it has a negative charge. So in our soils, phosphorus gets tied up to calcium and we end up not being able to use the majority of the FOSS that we put out there because it's not plant available once it gets tied up with calcium. So not only are you only able to use about 20% or less of the phosphorus you're applying to your ground, the 20% that your plant gets to use is bad for your plant. What happens is, is that as the plant's developing its root system, it immediately senses the FOSS in the ground and it uses all of its energy to take up FOSS and if we have excess nitrogen, to take up the FOSS and to take up the nitrogen. And then it doesn't fully develop its root system. Well, why is that bad? The reason that's bad is because your plant needs to put out exudates and those exudates actually attract bacteria and fungus to bring the plant the micronutrients it needs to grow a healthy grain, fruit, or vegetable. So when you're applying synthetic phosphorus and the plant takes up that phosphorus, it takes up the phosphorus. If you have nitrogen out there, it takes up the nitrogen but then it doesn't have the proper root system and development to pick up the other micronutrients it needs. And so you're never building the healthiest crops that you can be building and you can't build topsoil without root exudates because those root exudates create aggregates and aggregates is what builds soil structure in our fields. This sample from Regen Lab shows that we already have over a thousand pounds of phosphorus in our ground that's tied up and the plant can't use. And that's the key with the Johnson Sioux compost. So we got those six and there's two back over there. And then I've got one outside and I've got one in the, in the shed too. The, the oldest one's in the shed. The fungus and the bacteria that we're making from these Johnson Sioux bioreactors is the key. Those fungus and bacteria will stimulate your roots to put out exudates to bring the plant the micronutrients it needs. Having these bacteria and fungus in your soil will allow your plant to access more and more micronutrients in the future. So being able to apply extract from our Johnson Sioux bioreactors in our planter instead of applying FOSS has allowed us to eliminate the need for FOSS altogether. I know you're asking yourself the question, does it really work? Well, we got a recommendation to apply 180 pounds of nitrogen and 40 pounds of FOSS to our irrigated circles. And so we did test plots. We did a test plot where we did that recommendation of 180 pounds of nitrogen and 40 pounds of FOSS. And then we did no nitrogen and no FOSS. We did another test strip where we did 90 pounds of nitrogen and no FOSS. So on these three test strips, these were results. We raised 240 bushel corn. Did I just say 240 bushels an acre? Yeah, yeah, you did. But it's 238. Yep. Dang it. We're gonna have to reshoot the whole thing. You can't do that. You cut the field that you're standing in front of in the video last week for silage. Dude, what are we gonna do? Why don't you just put this clip of you talking to yourself in the video? That could work where we applied 180 pounds of nitrogen and 40 pounds of FOSS. We raised 200 bushel corn where there was no nitrogen and no FOSS. At last year's prices, we would have been better off applying the nitrogen and FOSS as opposed to applying nothing. But where we cut back and only used 90 pounds of nitrogen and we used 
no phosphorus, and applied the compost extract in furrow, we raised 242 bushel corn. So we are four bushels an acre better where we applied no FOSS at all. So it does work and it's amazing. We're really excited about this Milo field. So last year this field was corn. The year before that, it would have been wheat. So this year with our Milo, we applied only 40 pounds of nitrogen. Typically in this system, we'd apply 80 pounds of nitrogen and 40 pounds of FOSS to, to try to hit our yield goals of, of 100 bushel milo in a year where we get a lot of rain. Right now we've cut back to 40 pounds of nitrogen and no FOSS. That's going to be a savings for us of over $50 an acre. And as you can see, this milo looks really beautiful and I know it's gonna be good. I don't know that we're gonna hit our yield goal of 100, but I know that it's going to be good milo and I'm really excited about what we're seeing with using this Johnson Sioux extract and being able to cut back our inputs so much. Here we're at another milo field and it's the same story. We only applied 40 pounds of nitrogen, no phosphorus, and this is the third year in a row that we've raised milo on this field. This is the sixth year in a row that we've planted a cash crop on this particular field and it's been no-till for 15 years. And I've really seen a change in our soils here. We've got earthworms coming back. And again, this field didn't even get extract because I planted it with my drill and we don't have the ability to put extract. I simply treated the seed with extract from the Johnson Sioux bioreactor and planted it. And then we applied 40 pounds of nitrogen, no phosphorus and it is doing amazing. It's a little behind the other Milo's because of the difference in the, the variety, but it's coming along and it's gonna be an awesome Milo. Here we decided to take you to a dry land field. In this particular dry land field, uh, it's corn this year. The year before that, it was a multi-species cover crop. We grazed cattle on it. We love how that turned out because they put the cover crops on the ground. The year before that was corn, and then the year before that, it was wheat. And it's the same story here with the corn that it was with the Milo fields I've, I've just taken you to. This corn only has 50 pounds of nitrogen and no phosphorus. We've been comparing this field to our neighbors across the road and really as far as ear size goes and as far as health as a plant goes, we're not seeing that much of a difference. In fact, that field was more drought stressed and I don't wanna blame it on the lack of biology or biology uh, because they planted their corn before we planted this by two or three weeks and so this plant these plants weren't as far along and didn't feel the drought as quickly I believe because of the stages of their growth not I can't prove that it's necessarily from the biology but it's amazing to look at both sides and see the ear size and compare them and realize that we're not any different as far as ear size comparison from here to there and I know that we applied less nitrogen than they did and I know we didn't apply any FOSS and I'm positive they applied FOSS to their field so by dad and I's calculations we would have saved $120 an acre on our irrigated circles by eliminating FOSS and cutting back our nitrogen in half. That's huge savings for us and I know farmers across America can see the same savings as that. Before you try to tell yourself that this is just a freak phenomenon, people across the United States are doing this. From Louisiana to Montana, New Mexico and Arizona. My boys from Iowa, Kyle Schnell and Ryan Gibbs. And it's not just the United States, it's all across the world. I've got messages from people in Australia, India, South Central Asia, South Africa, and England. These are just people who have reached out to me. Think about how much further the phenomenon is beyond what I'm even aware of. If you guys wanna see how those test results went for us on raising 200 bushel corn with no nitrogen FOSS, you can watch this video right here. If you wanna learn how we're building our Johnson Sioux bioreactor so you can build your own Johnson Sioux bioreactor. We have three designs right here of different bioreactors that you can make. Thanks for watching.